All right, joining me now here on the MMA Report is a man we've had on the show in the past. He's going to be making his kickboxing debut at Evolution Fighting Championship on November 11th, an event that you can watch on Flow Combat. It's Stephen Nguyen, who's 4-0 in his MMA career. Stephen, I appreciate the time. You know, last time we, we talked, you talked about you're an opportunity fighter and that you're an opportunity maker. Uh, obviously, uh, the opportunities in MMA have, have, have struggled here for, you know, some guys just don't want to step up on, on relative short notice to fight you. Yeah. Um, you know, it, mentally, is that just, is, is it just frustrating when, when you want to have an MMA fight, but just, it just can't come together? Uh, you know, it is, it's a little, uh, mentally frustrating when guys back out, you know, stuff like that. But, you know, the main thing is you have to keep composed, uh, no matter what, what happens, it's, it's out of my control, um. These guys who back out, there's nothing I can do about it. If I stress, it's only going to get worse for me. So I just kind of stay in my own zone. I keep doing what I'm doing and hope for the best. And of course, you've been through some opponent changes uh, for this fight card. Is it? Is it? I mean, obviously, opponent changes can always happen. Everyone knows that. Is it more of just that knowing of, hey, look, when I'm in the training room, it's got to be about me. It can't be about the guy I'm going against. I just got to concern about myself and, and what I'm trying to accomplish on fight night. Uh, most definitely. I mean, yeah, I game plan, you know, I watch film on my, on my opponent's stuff like that. So we kind of formulate a plan and sometimes when they back out, it kind of messes that up a little bit. But at the end of the day, when I go out there, it's not about, it's not about what they're going to do. It's going to be about what I'm going to do. So when I'm training, I always focus on myself. With this being a kickboxing matchup, does the, the mentality change at all in terms of it being a kickboxing as opposed to an MMA fight? Uh, yeah, a hundred percent, you know, um, I haven't been doing any grappling much lately. I haven't been doing any of that training that I miss, you know, I miss doing it. I see my teammates doing it and I'll, I'll hop in here once in a while, but I'm, I'm so used to doing it every day. I'm used to doing jujitsu every day, wrestling every day. And I think that's why I also realize so far in this training camp, that's why I'm an MMA fighter because, uh, kickboxing, I've been doing just kickboxing every day and I love kickboxing. Don't get me wrong. It's just very repetitive you know i'm, I'm doing the same thing and uh mm -hmm. mma fighter so i like doing everything and i like waking up knowing that today i'm doing jujitsu or today i'm gonna be working on my stand-up or stuff like that i like mixing it up so um that's that's about the only difference um uh, I'm, I'm i'm really concentrating on my uh stand-up and uh you guys will see uh I'm, I'm going for the knockout so it'll be fun was taking a kickboxing matchup on your radar before this opportunity uh, no, not really. Uh, you know, I'm an MMA fighter at the end of the day. That's what I wanted to do. It just came down to this is a one of my. This is going to be one of my last hometown fights, and uh, you know, I just want to compete. At the end of the day, like the promoter, you know, said that he basically ran out of options, and the only thing he has left for me is a kickboxing fight. And he asked me if I wanted to take it or not. And at that point, you know, there's, you know, my back's against the wall. I've been training for the last couple months. You know, I was like, I have to. You know, um. I have to take whatever I can take. I can get. So uh, here I am. So a hometown fight. Obviously, there there's a lot of pros to it. You can sleep in your own bed. You you, you know uh, <laughs> yeah. you know where to, where to get food. You know how to properly you know cut weight to to make weight for a fight. But what are the the cons of being fighting at home? Is it is part of it just people hitting you up at very last minute looking for tickets? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I mean that that's definitely one. Um, I'm glad I have my guy, Tevin Jacks. He's uh, like my right-hand man. He helps take care of all that. But, um, you know, there's a lot of pressure when you're fighting in your hometown. That's where you grew up. Everybody knows who you are. Uh, people are emotionally invested in you. You're emotionally invested in them. There's a lot of, you know, good thing I've fought in my hometown plenty of times. So I'm used to the pressure, stuff like that. I think pressure actually brings the best out of me. But, um I try to think everything in a positive way. You ask about cons, stuff like that. There might be little things like, you know, pressure, uh, tickets, stuff like that. But I don't really even think about that too much. I'm just I, – I, I concentrate on the positive things and I, and I, and I strive on those. So um, that's what I do when, I fight, when I'm fighting in my hometown. Has there ever been a fight where you didn't feel pressure? Uh, you know, I, I, yeah, for sure. I mean, when I was an amateur – fighter went fighting hometown you know i was a little bit newer to the sport stuff like that I felt a lot of pressure it was the first time but now you know that i'm professional and i've done this and 
I'm, I'm pretty composed now. I know what I need to do. Um, there's always going to be pressure on me. I've basically realized that no matter where, if you're fighting out of town, anywhere, there's always going to be pressure on me, especially if you have a big following. Um, so you just have kind of have to block that out and uh, do what you do. And that's what I've been doing. So and, I'm here. And I mentioned about last time we talked about, we talked about the nickname and you saying, look, I'm a ninja. <laughs> How do you be a ninja in a kickboxing matchup? You know, I want to, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going to say too much, but I'm, you guys are going to see a lot of flying stuff. So <laughs> I'm going to be doing some spinning spinning stuff, flying stuff, just a lot of crazy things. You know, I, I, I see this kickboxing opportunity as a chance for me to get creative, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a chance to show my stand-up, a chance to go out there and do some techniques that people have never seen before. And uh, I'm, I'm 100% going to go out there and do that. So you guys better tune in. And, of course, that's November 11th on Flow Combat. The opponent, Clayton November Brown. 4th. Uh, November fourth, excuse me, uh, yeah. uh, against Clayton Brown here. Uh, Clayton's, uh, you know, obviously uh, y- you've gone through multiple opponent changes here. Uh, have you had the ability to watch a lot of film on Clayton, and, and what? How do you assess him as an opponent? Uh, I think he's had like one or two pro kickboxing fights already. Um, he's one and zero in MMA. He was like twelve and six or so, I don't know, like that in amateur. So I only watched like one video on him. I've and it was like one of his MMA fights, and you know that's that's probably about it. At this point, I think I'm just more concentrated on myself, and uh, I'm just gonna go out there and do what I do. And yeah, I mean, I'm not, I wasn't worried too much about what Clayton's gonna do this time. I've had so many opponent changes, and I've studied so many different guys already. I'm at the point of just like, you know what? I'm just gonna go in there and. And, and go with it and do what I do. I've, I watched one video of him to get a feel of what he does, but, you know, I'm just going to go out there and uh, execute. So, And, of course, this year, third fight of 2017. How, how would you say you've evolved as a fighter from your first fight this year to now? Oh, man, you know, I've been working on so many different things. Uh, like I said, in MMA, there's so many aspects to work on. I've been working on my ground, my stand-up, but I think one of the main things that – has changed dramatically about me is just like my my conditioning and my strength. I mean, I've gotten a little bit bigger. I'm cutting a little bit more weight now. Uh, I guess I'm just growing up or something. I'm 24 years old, but still growing up a little bit. Um, but I can I feel a lot different strength wise, conditioning wise. I mean, and I think the main thing is my fight IQ. Uh, you know, just in the gym, training smarter, finding openings that I haven't found before. You know, so I'm just getting more more experienced and. Uh, you guys better watch out. I'm coming. Uh, I've been asking this question to a lot of fighters recently because I'm just kind of fascinated, I think, it, to, to hear what a fighter would answer. is There's always talks about rule changes. We don't see many rule changes in MMA, but there is now uh, the Rules and Regulations Committee that makes these suggestions. For you as a fighter, if you could change one rule, what would it be? Uh, if I could change one rule... <laughs> I'm pretty fine with the rules right now. Uh, I think um, I think we should, uh, you know, some of the time. Sometimes when we get fouled by getting getting hit in the cup or getting mm-hmm. gouges in the eyes, stuff like that, um, I feel like some guys take advantage of that, knowing that maybe the very first time uh, that they do it, even if it's on accident, that they can get away with it. Um, I feel like maybe we should have a more stronger penalty for that because I've I've been fouled so many times in fights and I feel like these guys do it on they 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 do it on purpose but they make it seem like it's on accident to 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 mess the other fighter up like they poke the guy's eyes on accident but I don't know you know at the end of the day I think the rules overall are pretty good and there's I don't have any major complaints but maybe we can uh, give a uh, more of a um, for give give them um, more of a penalty for uh, uh-huh. fouls, you know. It, 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 I don't. <laughs> the one foul I would like to see an emphasis on is grabbing the cage because it just seems yeah. like I I, I, I rarely I, I was at a local fight probably about three or four months ago and I actually saw a referee take a point for for the fire grabbing the fence, which I was astonished by because that seems to never happen. It seems yeah. more times than not a guy could you know grab it, it, it 15, 20 times because there can be times where a guy grabs a fence and it, it stops you from doing something. And I'm me, telling you, it, 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 changes, it, it changes from one takedown can take a lot of energy in the third round 
one minute left, and I'm trying to take the guy down to win the fight, and he grabs the cage, you know, that's, and then the ref doesn't do anything about it. I mean, and he stops the takedown. I mean, that could that could be the game changer right there. So, see, I've always said if you grab the fence and stop a takedown, that should be a point. <laughs> I agree. But but if the refs aren't going to do anything about it, what? No. Why is it going to stop? Right, and usually they don't even do it. They've only they only give warnings. They don't even. Even after they grab the cage three, four times, they don't even say anything. So maybe that's one thing you need to change. You mentioned about uh, you know the illegal kicks to the groin. It's I think a lot of fans say, why don't you take the full five minutes? Because it seems like, for the most part, a lot of guys just want to get back in there. Is part of that the adrenaline of you kind of don't want to lose that? Yeah, I mean, uh, so basically, like, you're, you're, you're in the fight. That adrenaline's going, and, you know, you already have. And especially... I. Especially if you're, like, like I said, if you're in the middle of exchange, you're going and you feel like you're winning the fight or something like that. You want to kind of get back in there because, yes, you're wrestling, but the other guy's wrestling as well. So, um, for me at least, I just take, you know, maybe the amount of time I need to take that so my nuts won't hurt anymore, and then I'm ready to go again. You know, I mean, it's simple as that. Because, you know, I'm just for me at least, I'm just trying to go, go, go. I want to get back in there and. Uh, start performing i don't i don't like to wait too long personally so but of course you've got the fight here evolution fighting championships which fans can watch on flow combat let everyone know where they can follow you at on uh, social media uh you guys can follow me on instagram at steven win w-i-n at 145 and uh you guys i have a facebook fan page steven the ninja win follow me um and yeah so guys check me out come out and support or watch me on flow combat 